All right, so I've been on Arknet so long recently that I actually forgot about 2.2 and how it's literally in like four days from now. So I kind of forgot to make this build guide. So today I'm here with a Robin full build guide. Robin will be a part of the first half of 2.2 along with the Topaz rerun. And I will have a build guide as you're seeing now for Robin. I'll have one coming up for Topaz, one for Foothill, and one for Fushwan that will be coming out in the next few days. So definitely stay tuned for that if you are summoning for any of them. So just like my other build guides, this video will be going over her kit, Eidolons, Lycons, and Relics that I recommend you use. There will also be some disclaimers at parts in the video, so I definitely recommend you stay tuned to find out what those disclaimers are. Because there are some things that are not available right now, and I will have a recommendation for that. Yep, yeah, that's all I gotta say. Before I get to the video, drop a like, drop a sub, hit the bell icon for more videos like this. Because again, I have multiple build guides coming out in the future. So stay tuned for that, and let's get straight into it. Starting off with Robin's kit, if you guys don't know, Robin is a physical character following the path of Harmony. Her basic attack deals physical damage equal to 100% of Robin's attack to a single enemy. Her skill increases damage dealt by all allies by 50% for 3 turns, and the duration decreases by 1 at the start of Robin's turn. I will also say there are going to be some words that I can't remember how to say, which is like 3 words in her kit, I think, or 1, and like 2 in her Lycon, so I'm not going to try to say them. I will just skip over the words, so yeah. So for our ultimate, Robin enters the ult state and makes all allies take action immediately. So yes, when you do pop the ult, all your allies will have a immediate 100% turn advance, so they will be able to act again. While she is in the ult state, increases all allies attack by 22.8% of Robin's attack plus 200. Moreover, after every attack by allies, Robin deals additional physical damage equal to 120% of her attack one time. The crit rate for this damage is set to 100% and the crit damage is set to 150%. When in the alt state, Robin is immune to crowd control debuffs and cannot enter her turn or take action. So when she is in the alt state, you'll be doing the physical damage, giving everyone the buff, a turn advance, but she herself won't be able to use your skill again until you are out of the state. A alt countdown appears on the action order bar. When the countdown's turn begins, Robin exits the state and immediately takes action. The countdown has its own fixed speed of 90. Her talent increases all allies' crit damage by 20% and when any allies launch an attack, she regenerates an additional 2 energy. For our technique, when using it, creates a dimension around the character that lasts for 15 seconds. Enemies within the dimension will not attack Robin and will follow Robin while the dimension is active. After entering battle while the dimension is active, Robin regenerates 5 energy at the start of each wave and only one can be created at the same time. For our bonus traces, first one when using skill additionally regenerates 5 energy. Second one while in the alt state, all allies crit damage when logic follow up attacks increases by 25%. And for a third one when the battle begins, this character's action is advanced forward by 25%. Now moving on to her Eidolons. For her first Eidolon, while in the alt state, all allies alt type rest pen increases by 24%. Second Eidolon, while in the alt state, all allies speed increases by 16%. Talent regeneration effect additionally increases by 1. For fourth Eidolon, when Robin uses her ultimate, dispels crowd control debuffs from all allies and increases the effect res of all allies by 50% while Robin is in the alt state. And for her final Eidolon, which turns her into a DPS pretty much, while in the alt state, the crit damage of the additional physical damage caused by the ultimate increases by 450%. The moveless midnight effect can be triggered up to 8 times. The trigger count is reset when this unit uses an ultimate. So yeah, you get a 450% crit damage increase to that additional physical damage, which is actually just wild. Now moving on to the light cones, the best one is obviously going to be her own. What it does is the wear gains one stack of, not gonna try to say it, every time any ally attacks. Each stack of, yeah, increases the wearer's energy regeneration rate by 3% up to 5 stacks. When the wearer uses their ultimate, removes that and gains that, that increases the wearer's attack by 48% and the team's damage dealt by 24%, lasting for one turn. So there sadly isn't too many options for Robin, but as she is a harmony support, there are options you can use. So another nice option will be Bronia Signature Lycone. What it does is increases the wearer's energy regeneration rate by 10% and regenerates one skill point when the wearer uses their ultimate on an ally. This effect can be triggered once every two uses of the wearer's ultimate. When the wearer uses this skill, the next ally taking action except the wearer deals 30% more damage for one turn. As it is sadly tailored towards the skill, when you do pop the skill, as it did say, you give everyone a damage increase. This one will further increase that damage for the next one taking action. Sadly, her action advance is on her all and not her skill. So you could sort of do it where you pop the skill and then you pop the all, and if you have it tuned properly for I guess who has the best speed on the team, that w person would be going first, and so they would also get the buff from you using the skill with this light cone. This is another option you can't do, and the energy regeneration rate 
increase is also very nice. Same with the skill point that you get every two ultimates. Sort of similar to Bronny's Lycon, where I did say you kind of yeah, tune that a bit for the skill. Same thing with this next Lycon, the past and future. Because what it does is when the wear uses the skill, the next ally taking action except the wear deals 16% increased damage for one turn. Again, her alt advance, or I guess team advance is on her ultimate, and her skill doesn't advance forward anyone, so using this on someone that isn't Bony or Sparkle is sort of harder, but it's still possible. Another really good option for her, which is more tailored towards the DPS side, but it sort of does help her support because she does go off attack, is the new Lycon for tomorrow's journey, which will be a part of the event that you can get for free. Since this Lycon will be free, I will be displaying the max stat, so at R5, it increases the wearer's attack by 32%. After the wearer uses their ultimate, increases their damage up by 30%, lasting for one turn. So the additional damage you do do when you are in your ultimate, you do even more damage with this light gun. So it is nice for people who want Robin to do more damage. The 32% stat stick is also really nice to the attack because as the buff does increase with their attack, she and her damage mainly scales off by attack as well. Now moving on to her relics. So I will have a big disclaimer right now. There looks to be a new relic set coming out in potentially 2.3, maybe a little later, that is going to be a lot better for Robin. So for relics right now, I would recommend just getting a usable set or using what you have and not trying to go crazy for Robin because eventually there will be a better set to use. And so I'd recommend saving your Trailblazer refreshes or saving all your stamina to do something else. For these, I'd recommend you just use the pieces you have now or try to get at least a usable set. But for the relic sets I would recommend using now is the two piece on either the dot or musketeers because they have the same two piece the 12% attack increase is nice and for the second relics you'd run the other two piece on it depends if you want her to do more damage you can rock two piece physical damage set but if you want her to be mainly the harmony support and just try to get her all as fast as possible and just be support purely two piece hackerspace is also nice for the speed but that's pretty much all you can do right now, so I'd recommend always having at least a two-piece of the dot set or two-piece of the musketeers because the attack percent increase is nice. And then two-piece physical or two-piece hacker space is another nice option. You can also do two-piece musketeer and two-piece prisoners because then you're getting a 24% attack increase, which is also not a bad option. Now for her planner ornaments, she is still at heart a harmony support, so the best ones you can do is either broken keel for the crit damage increase and all the effect res, or Fleet of the Ageless for nice max HP increase in case she does get attacked. And 120 speed or higher is going to be a no-brainer on a Harmony support. Giving everyone the attack increase is also going to be nice. But if you want her to deal a little more damage, you can also give her the Space Ceiling Station. Because it also does increase attack, so you get even a better buff with the attack percent. And then reaching 120 speed or higher gives you an additional, so you get another 24% attack from this if you have 120 speed or higher. So that's another option you can do. For the main stats, for the body, I would recommend doing attack percent. For the feet, this honestly depends on you. I personally would recommend speed because you want her to get turns so you can get the ultimate faster because she does have a pretty steep energy requirement. So I definitely recommend running speed so you can get your ult faster and have more uptime on your skill. The skill is uptimed pretty long, but it's still nice to just be able to pop it to get more energy back. So I would recommend speed, but you can also do attack percent. For the orb, you will do attack percent, and for the link rope, energy regeneration rate. For the substats, getting more attack percent is going to be nice because you want to have a really nice buff. Speed is also going to be really important because, again, you want to have more turns to get more uptime on the ultimate. And then past that, you just sort of want some ability stats, so HP, defense, effect res, all that kind of stuff. And that's sort of what you want to do for the relics. And so, yeah, that is practically it for the Robin guide. Again, for the light cones, there isn't too many options, but there is a free play option coming out. That's going to be nice. So just using a filler on her until you can get the R5 of the new free one is an option. For the relics, again, I would recommend waiting just because it's going to be a better one and you don't want to waste all your trailblaze power or time just getting these ones because there will be a better one. So I'd also definitely recommend waiting for that one. Again, we just know about it. It could end up not happening, but it's always better safe than sorry. So yeah, that's practically it. Let me know if you guys are going to be summoning for Robin, because me personally, I have to get her easier S1. She is a really nice follow-up support, and follow-up is my favorite team, so I'm going to have to do that. Anyway, that's been the video. Peace out.